In today's video, we're going to go ahead and start creating the asteroid. So I'm going to start off by creating a script for it. And I'm just going to call it asteroid. And since we're going on the notion of not actually creating any, but importing any assets, uh, I'm going to go ahead and save off my player ship so I have a prefab. I'm going to leave it in the scene, but I'm going to need an asteroid. And we can really use any shape for this. I'm just going to go with a sphere. And I'll move it out. Now, normally I want my asteroids to be bigger than my ship, but I would be handling this with the model itself and changing the, the scale factor. Since we're just using a sphere that comes with Unity, I'm not going to worry about it too much. I know I can change the scale up here. And I know when I finally get my finalized model, I'll have that model itself. And on the import settings, I can change the scale factor there as well. So for this one here, I'm just going to go ahead, rename it to Asteroid and attach the script. And let's go ahead and open up this script. And I want the asteroid, go back. I want it to change its scale on X, Y, and Z so it's not perfectly round. I want them to change it randomly when the asteroid itself is first instantiated, first created. And I also want it to rotate in, well, in some direction, some random direction. So let's go ahead and jump right back into our script. And right off the bat, I know I'm going to be rotating. That means I'm going to need a void update. And we looked at rotating with the player movement script if we came down here. Right here, we went ahead and grabbed a transform and did some sort of rotation on it. I'm going to use the same technique here. So that means we need to go ahead, cache our transform, which I'm going to stick to the my T naming. And in awake, you know what to do here, right? Go ahead, take that transform variable we created and go ahead and cache. Now, like I said, when it first starts, I wanted to go out and create a random size and a random rotation for me. And I'm going to do that in start. Well, let's make it void start. So random size, random rotation. Now the random size we can assign directly to our transform scale, but the rotation we're going to go ahead and store in a variable just so we can keep updating it in the, well, the update function. So I'm going to go ahead, create a vector three. I'm going to call it random rotation. Now by default, a vector three, when you first create it, if you do not assign a value to it, will be a vector three dot zero, which is just a zero in all three X, Y, and Z. Great, so let's go ahead and do the size. We can say my T dot local scale dot X is equal to random dot range. Then the range we want. I want about a 20% fluctuation. So I'm gonna say 0.8F, to 1.2F, I'm keeping the F's in there because, well, they're floats. And let's just go ahead and save that part off, jump into our editor and take a look at the air we got. So if we take a look here, we notice that we can't directly access it to the vector three and just change the values. So what we're gonna have to do is come up here and create a new vector three, which I'm just gonna call scale. Then I'm just gonna go ahead and change this part to scale. Then down here, I'll say my t dot local scale is equal to scale. So right now, all we're changing is the x. So let's jump back in, wait for it to recompile. Oops, looks like I forgot to initiate it. Uh, new, instead of just typing new, equals new. Uh, let's just say equals vector three dot zero. That way, everything starts off zeroed out. Now we can save it, jump back in. This should go away. And when we start it up, our cube, or sorry, our sphere here should change on the X. Let's see. There we go, it changed the size, it's a little bit smaller. I can't even see, oh, because we went ahead and made it zero on the others. Let's go ahead and change this to dot one. It doesn't really matter what we change this one to, to be quite honest, because we're gonna be changing the other values in just a second here. But vector 3.1 will go ahead and initialize this scale when we first create it to be equaling 1 on the X, Y, and Z. It's just shorthand, and it comes in handy sometimes. So now when we go ahead and start it, we get a different scale here, and the others are still 1. And you can notice that a little bit, the, the size change. There we go. Now, it is only a 20% size change, so it's not like it's going to be huge and dramatic. I am noticing that the clatter's not changing with it. I know when I have models in my game and I scale, 
they have always changed with me. So let's just go ahead and we'll do the other two and see what happens. Right now, I'm not too worried about it. When I go ahead and import actual models, then I'll start worrying about it. So I'm going to go ahead and say Y. We'll grab a random value. And let's do Z. And I'm tempted to get rid of these hard casted numbers. And we probably should. I'm going to put them up top here. I'm going to make them serialized fields because I might just want to go ahead and change them in the inspector. And of course, they'll float. I'm just going to say min uh, size or scale. Let's do scale equal to point eight F another serialized field of type float and this will be max scale there we go just in case I ever want to change them in the inspector now I know some people are like well wait a minute why don't you just use constants well the main reason is because I might want to change this in the inspector later there we go those are all done we've got the scale done now all we have to do well let's quickly go test this out let's go back into the editor and try it out then after this, we're going to do the rotation. So there we go. Go. It looks like it. The sphere does resize to whatever the smallest size is. So yeah, it looks like the sphere is resizing to fit it in, but we are using a sphere collider. But that's okay. Like I said, when we actually get into importing 3D models, that can change for us. All right, so let's go do this random rotation thing. Now I've got the random rotation up here. Notice that it's in the global scope, and that's because I also need it down here in update, where this scale part, I don't need it anywhere else except here in start. I could even break this out into its own function, you know, um, generate random scale or something like that, and just call it from start. And if I knew for sure that I was gonna use that method uh, sometime later on in the game, maybe I had asteroids just randomly change shape for whatever reason, I would go out and put it in, a, in its own method, but for now, I don't think I'm ever going to do it, so I'm just going to keep it here. So let's go ahead and we'll pretty much copy this. Except now we're going to use random rotation. And instead of using min scale, we're going to go ahead and use different values. Now, I could already see wanting to create a method where I pass in a vector 3 and maybe a min max. And it does all the calculation for me and just returns another vector three, which I can directly assign. I'll leave that for you for homework. But for this, I'm going to come up here. I'll just copy these. Instead of saying min scale, I'll say min rotation and max rotation. And I'm going to say, actually, I'm going to handle this one a little bit different. And I'll just keep the variable named as rotation offset. And this is going to be either plus or minus a certain number. So I'm not really sure how fast I want it to rotate. So I'm just going to start off with 100. Probably way too quick, but it's a place to start off with. So I'm going to come in here and say negative rotation offset to offset for all three. There we go. So now I can have a rotation from negative 100 to positive 100 on any of these axes. Then we can come in here and say my T dot rotate. Then we have a couple ways here. Uh, we do have a vector three, so we'll go ahead and try that. Vector, well, random rotation multiplied by time dot delta time. Go ahead, save that off, jump back in. Now we're using time dot delta time because, well, we got to be able to smooth it out over different frame rates. So we'll start this up, and there we go. I should have had to debug out what the rotation speed is. That's probably about as fast as I want it to go. I'm going to quickly debug that out. I just want to see what it is. Uh, Debug.log. Then we'll just go ahead and throw in the random rotation. And there we go. This is 35. So yeah. Negative 97. It's rotating too fast because when you get bigger asteroids, it's going to be really fast. So I'm going to go ahead, slow that down, probably to about half of that. So I'll go ahead, change it to 50. Now remember, the values that you have in your inspector override any values you have set up here. Uh, I see a lot of people getting that wrong in class. So if you've got inspector values, remember you change it there. And that's what the speed I should like. When it's bigger, that should be a good rotation speed. All right. 
Uh, so we've got it rotating randomly. We've uh, gone ahead and changed the size. I'm going to go ahead and save that off as my prefab. And in the next video, let's go ahead and I guess work on our asteroid field or have some sort of script, our asteroid manager. And let's go ahead and just start putting asteroids around in our scene randomly. Until then, I'll see you later. Bye-bye. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You're a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest. Or being stalked by eagles and falcons. Lions, tigers, and bears. <laughs>